welcome to Balanced Health. I'm Shirley Rose and this is Joe Costello. Every month we hear news reports about diabetes affecting more and more people. It's obvious that diabetes is becoming a significant issue in our society. But what causes it and is there anything each of us can do to keep from getting it? Well, today we'll examine the precursors to diabetes and learn some steps we can take to reduce our chances of becoming a diabetic. To help us navigate the subject, Dr. Walt Laramore has joined us in the studio. Dr. Walt is an award-winning medical journalist and author of who's, who's appeared in interviews on many national television and radio networks. And he's also a regular guest here on Balanced Health, and we like to have him in the flesh. <laughs> Welcome, Dr. Walt. Welcome, Dr. Walt. We'll be tackling diabetes with Dr. Walt in just a minute. But first, Joe Costello brings us another topic that's been prevalent in the news, and that's milk, of all things. Going to talk a lot about milk today, uh, Shirley. First of all, in the news, the demand for raw milk is growing in much of the, in the United States, including the state of Massachusetts, where the number of dairies licensed to sell raw milk has grown from 12 to 23 in the past two years. Meanwhile, according to the Northeast Organic Farming Association, dairies are selling more raw milk than they were just five years ago, and consumers call in every week looking for advice on where to find it. While the U.S. Food and Drug Administration warns that raw milk can carry disease-causing bacteria, advocates say raw milk is healthy because it contains good bacteria, enzymes, and raw fats, fats that help to boost your immune system and aid in digestion. Both anecdotal and scientific reports also support the health benefits. For instance, a study by the researchers at the Institute of Social and Preventive Medicine at the University of Basel in Switzerland found that children who drank raw milk had a lower risk of asthma and allergies. Mm. Surely, Dr. Walt, we're, we're seeing, in my opinion, a cataclysmic paradigm shift in this country about the way we treat our animals, mm. uh, the way we process them for food. And I think uh, the, the advent and the news and information that's out on raw milk is really a telltale sign of that. Mm. I think we're at a watershed kind of moment uh, with this whole scenario because five years ago, you mentioned the words raw milk, you could have gotten arrested. Mm. Um, and it was, might have been illegal to sell it, who knows? It but. still is, it's only what it's, what it's, it's only legal in 28 states wow. now. Um, but raw milk has been shown to uh, uh, really possess tremendous health benefits. And again, I know I've said this so many times on the show, but we go back to God's design. Mm -hmm. uh, right. you know, now we are the only species that drinks another species milk. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know, usually a calf would drink a, a cow's milk. So, well, we don't were, get me started on that because I think God intended us to. Otherwise, cows wouldn't have so much more milk than they need for their calves. Well, and, and, <laughs> and God made all things clean. Remember the, the verse with Peter: where He made all things clean. So we know that this is not against God's will. That much we can certainly say for sure. And I think that the milk that comes from a healthy cow was designed to be healthy for us. Mm -hmm. And um, that's what we got to get back to. Yeah, and in the Bible, they drank goat's milk instead. But anyway, um, hey, what about Illinois? Is it? Can you buy raw milk? You can in buy. It's kind of interesting. Some states, like Illinois, you can get raw milk. Um, it's not illegal to sell it, but it's illegal to make any claims, and oh. it's not necessarily illegal to market it. But it may as well be because you're going to run into some stiff opposition okay. if you do. Okay. The ultimate best scenario, if you can get raw milk from a cow from a farm that is locale to you, you yes, know, close in your proximity area. to mm -hmm. you, especially if you've been living here for a while, your body has adapted, even in the 20 or 30, 40 years that you've been really? here, to the, to the nutrients in the, in the surrounding soil. So uh, eating local is always best, Shirley. Hmm. Interesting, very interesting. What do you think about that, raw milk versus? Yeah, I, I think I'm with the FDA on this one. I think okay. that the potential risks outweigh the potential benefits okay. until we know more. And now I'm biased a bit, you know, Joe, we're each biased by our, um, by our backgrounds, but I had a child in my practice that almost died from a bacterial infection from raw milk. It's called listeria. And that's the concern the FDA has, is okay. the bacterial infections, especially for very young children. Uh, may outweigh the benefit. I'm, so I'm waiting to sure. see more science on it. Uh, and I could see that there would be a danger. I guess you just really have to know your source. Is that right? You really have to know the yeah. source and, uh, and you have to use common sense. Mm -hmm. Yes, but exactly. Our main topic today is diabetes. Yeah. And um, the reason why, this is the second or third time we've done mm. this topic on this show. The reason for that is what is happening in this country. Yeah. I personally believe that obesity is the single biggest disease in our country. I know that the data would say it's heart disease or that it's cancer, cancer but I mm -hmm. believe that obesity uh, is the is a precursor of all that, including joint 
uh, arthritis, joint disease, everything that we're seeing, we're, we're bigger than we're, our frame is meant to carry. Yes. So we're overburdening. But let's get into the basics on uh, diabetes. Uh, Doc, can you quickly explain the difference between type 1 and type 2? Well, sure. Type 1 is uh, diabetes where the body does not produce enough insulin. So insulin-dependent uh, diabetes. It's one that we see in, in children and, and in adults. Uh, used to be called uh, childhood onset diabetes, now it's type 1. Mm -hmm. Type 2 diabetes <laughs> is the diabetes we see in those predominantly who are overweight. They have plenty of insulin. In fact, too much insulin because they tend to be insulin resistance. And Joe, that's where we're seeing the epi epidemic, not only in adults, but in hmm. teens and kids. And it's a tsunami that's going to impact our country. Th that's amazing because we used to only see type 2 in adults and older people and overweight people. Now the, over the obesity is in the children and that's well, and really Because scary. of that, we're seeing diseases in the office now in, pedi in pediatrics that we used to only used to see in adults. Hypertension, uh, heart disease, strokes, wow. arthritis. In fact, Joe, one of the areas of rapid growth in orthopedics is joint replacement surgery and obese teenagers. My oh goodness. my goodness. It's, it's an awful, awful problem. That's too bad. Well, it's th three words I would use here. It's actually four, I guess, but high fructose corn syrup, I believe, is one of the culprits, the major culprits. It's in everything. That's true. Um, and our, our kids are eating quantities of food that is not appropriate. Uh, we, if we send them into Maybe the family eating room, too much. Yes. They're eating too much. We send them into the family room with chips. We need to send them in there with a, a little bowl of chips with a predetermined serving. It's very easy to buy organic chips, stuff that doesn't have all this other stuff added. But what we're doing is we're letting them walk in there with a big whole bag of chips, open them up and keep it. And so we are building our kids too big. Um, and, I, and I think that this, this, this diabetes starting earlier, joint replacement mm -hmm. starting mm -hmm. earlier, you use the word tsunami, mm -hmm. as time rolls on here, you know, what are we going to be talking about 15 or 20 years from now? I hope it's not what I think, but... Well, you're an activist and, you, and you're trying to get, like, healthier food in the schools and things like that. So hopefully, you know, our society will get it before it gets to that. But, you know, who knows? We have these bad habits, you know, that we... we do. And I'm not real big on government regulation, but the, the purpose of the federal government, according to our Constitution, was to protect our culture. And I believe that protecting our culture, one of the things that the government can institute, and we're seeing some of this. In fact, I saw the, uh, uh, the Surgeon General for the state of New York, who's been a tremendous advocate for this. I think every fast food place, I think every restaurant should ha have to uh, post calories, uh, fat grams, and all those things, and everything trans that everybody eats, and trans fats, and also post any synthetic ingredients that are in that food and how the animal was raised. Yeah, well, I, did a, I did, did a book for a Florida hospital down in Orlando called Super Size Kids, How to Protect oh. Your Child from the Obesity Threat. And we included in that book recommendations for school, for governments, and I think that's one of the reasons that then Governor Mike Huckabee and mm -hmm. Senator Tom Coburn endorsed the book. Joe, there's many causes to the epidemic and there's many potential answers to mm -hmm. it. Well, I think one of them is, you know, any in information that we talked about, but quickly a uh, answer this question for me, if you will. One thing most physicians don't check until you're already diagnosed is insulin levels. We had mentioned, we were talking off air about Dr. Joe Mercola, who is a guy who's really big on checking insulin levels. I get mine checked there. The normal st standards are 10 to 26. His standards are 1 to 10. Oh, my goodness. Uh, don't you think that measuring insulin and blood it would de help detect this earlier or be another tool in doing so? It is a tool that more and more physicians are beginning to use, not the only tool, but a tool mm -hmm. uh, in, in checking are people heading towards prediabetes. And the reason for that is because if we know you're heading that way, we know there are things you can do to prevent it. And that's the good news story that we're going to be talking about in this show. Super. Well, for more information on diabetes, go to TLN.com and then click on Balanced Health under the show's menu. Or to get a copy of today's show, give us a call at the number on your screen. And up next, do adult stem cells offer a possible cure for diabetes? Fascinating subject. And we'll investigate that question with Dr. Walt when we return. So stay tuned.